found only little logs that are not in this book. And most of the time it will even tell you the weak spots of the log. And, uh, uh, it's called Logs, Safes and Security, the second edition. He also has a number of CDs that come with the book. Uh, there's three categories, the normal people, the locksmiths and the intelligence community. Uh, for the normal people I think it's two CDs, for the locksmiths it's four CDs, and for the intelligence community there's ten CDs. So not all the techniques are in the book, and if this book says this lock cannot be picked, Take it with a grain of salt because there is higher interest in, you know, if the lock is in the, in the door of the, the Iraqi embassy, they're not going to tell you it can be paid. But well, if you if you manage to get the 10 CDs, I'm interested. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, let's talk about the basics of, uh, of picking locks. Um, normally, a lock has a row of uh, pins of the lock construction. Yeah, it's <coughs> complex. Um, there's a core in the lock here, you see. Um, then there is, what, what do you call this, Mike? The base? And what uh, kind of lock you call it? Uh, what piece do you mean? Okay, the, there's a rotating part. The plug. The plug, okay. And the rest is the core. The rest would be the cylinder or the, uh, the body. Okay. You want to use this one? Um, okay. may, maybe you better explain how the lock works because... Oh, okay, uh, let me throw them both on there then. Okay, there's two colorway cylinders. Easiest way to do a show is I'm just going to pull out the key and watch what happens. You have the springs, then top pins, then bottom pins. The place between the top pin and bottom pin is called the shear line. And now, everything I say right now, I'm keeping very basic. So anyone who knows about master keying and all kinds of ball bearing systems, ignore it now. So right now, it's just very basic. When you pull out the key, I don't know if you can see this. Uh, someone yell at me if you can't see it well. When you pull out the key, the different pins move up and down until... Now, if you look very closely, the shear lines are not matched up with the plug and the cylinder shear line. So the pins are in different places than the plug. Unless they line up and you have a straight line, you're not turning the lock, unless you have a big screwdriver. So what you want to do is you want to get them to line up. You can either use a key, a pick, a pick gun, or a couple other ways. And that's basic lock terminology. Plug, a cylinder, or body. On the back you have a cam or tailpiece, depending on the type of lock, a couple of set screws, and some pins, some springs. Uh, while we're at it, let's show this real quick. So, a pin kit for when you set up locks with a locksmith, you can use this. Let's throw it on there. Can we focus this up? Can we zoom out a lot? Yeah, keep going. Okay. Well, that's, that's about as far out as I can go. Uh, that's many, many, many different size pins. Uh, and this could happen to go from, for top pins, those are flat on both sides. Bottom pins have a point, so the key flows better, theoretically. Um, the bottom pins go from one ten thousandth of an inch all the way up to... more over there. Looks like 185 uh, ten thousandths of an inch. Bottom pins are going from... Uh, Real little to real big. <laughs> I can't count that much, there's a lot of numbers. Yes? Uh, the Bible usually I would refer to on most locks, like, where do we have it? Uh, in this type of lock, can we, can we see that? This piece where the uh, springs are in, a lot of people call that the Bible. Only reason I'm not is just to keep the name simple. True, true, true. Some books do call the Bible and cylinder. Thank you. Okay. Okay. That's nothing. That's a lock. Basic. Don't, don't drop this. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone who comes gets one free pin. <laughs> okay. Okay, for picking, uh, sometimes you see a movie, James Bond is walking to a door, he sticks in something, up he's in. That's called a key. <laughs> we lock pickers use always two tools most of the time. They're called the tension wrench. I've uh, putting a few.
figure up here. And actually, what you are doing with the tension wrench, see if I can focus. What you're doing with the tension wrench is you insert it into the lock. Like this. And thereby forcing the lock to bind on one or two pins. As you can see, there's five rows of, uh, of double pins, low and high pins. Um, what you do with the tensioner is you put it in and you turn it as if it was a key. But since the pins are not aligned in the correct height, um, the pins will jam the lock from turning. That, that's the whole idea. You're, you're pushing tension on the lock, it will bind. Um, because of mechanical imperfect uh, uh, stuff, the lock will not bind on all five pins at the same time. There's always one or two pins that are a little bit thicker or that the lock is not drilled perfectly well. And when you put tension on the lock, it will normally bind on one or two pins. Then what you do is you go in with what is called a feeler pick. And it's just a simple, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's like a finger. They call it the finger pick, the feeler pick. And what you do is once you have tension on the lock, you go into the lock. I can see back there. You go to the lock, and with the feeler pick, you go one by one of the pins. You, you try to push them up, and if you feel resistance, then that is a pin that's binding, and that pin when you put tension on the lock, you find a binding pin, you lift it up, and if you reach the right height where the lock will actually turn, the lock will make a little click, the, the inner core will rotate just a little bit, and the tension will go off the pin because you will feel it fall back. It, there's no strength on it anymore, and you just set one pin. Uh, now, there's five pins in there. Say that, for instance, the first pin was the number two that was binding, then you set the number two, then uh, you go feel for the rest, then you feel, for instance, that the number four is binding. You try to set it, um, and, and that's actually how it goes. You just set all the pins in the, in the right position. Um, so far, any questions? Uh, one quick thing, actually. Um, what you're saying, basically, is, from my understanding, because of mechanical imperfection in the manufacturing process, since you can't make it perfect, is why lock picking is possible. Since pins aren't exactly perfectly inside the uh, channels, they have a little bit of play. The more play, the easier to pick, as a general rule. If it's very, very tightly manufactured, it's going to be very hard to pick. Because they can slightly cock and slightly move, you can catch it right at that shear line, put tension there, and catch that shear line. That's what picks is all about, and you have to do one pin, another pin, etc., etc., so you run out of pins and lock opens. Yes? Okay, I've, I've just been notified that uh, for questions we need a microphone so they can also take the question. So let's first do the do the 20 minute intro and then we go to the questions. I've been asked to do this. So. Okay, um, I here have a very cheap padlock. I mean, it's like uh, two or three dollars, but for demonstrating it's very good because there's a lot of people, a lot of tension. And if I don't pick the lock, uh, we laugh. <laughs> we laugh. Okay, so here's this uh, this cheap lock. Here's the tensioner. I insert it high into the lock. I hope you can see it. I hope it's in focus. Um, let's see if I can focus a little bit better. Okay. Now, I take the feeler pick, go in, and try to push the pins, and I find that the number one pin is binding, thick. I just said it. This is a very cheap lock, it doesn't have, I don't even think it has five rows of pins. I go in more. Remember, when people watch, things never work. It's true. Okay, I picked it. It's open. <laughs> uh, 
on my team. Okay, as I told you, this is a, a very cheap lock. And uh, today we'll talk about picking, but I'll also talk about bypassing. Because picking is nice, but sometimes there are even faster ways and quicker ways to, uh, to pick a lock. Um, for instance, when I look at the uh, mechanical when, when I look at the mechanical inside of this lock, and we, we opened one up in the Netherlands, I found that uh, the mechanism that's holding the shackle can actually be pushed straight away. If I just push in uh, anything, it opens. <laughs> you don't need to be a good uh, lock picker. You just stick something in in the back and wiggle it a little bit and it will just uh, open. Um, but there, there's more. Um, when, when you look at the padlock, you see here the two cuts that hold the shackle in the, in the body, as I, as I call it. Um, there, there's two types of mechanisms. There's the right and the wrong. <laughs> um, the right one are mechanical uh, perfect systems that if you turn the key, actually a, a piece of metal is being rotated and taken out and you can only close these locks when the key is inside. So you, can, uh, you really need to turn the lock in order to remove the part that's holding the shackle in place. Um, well, this is a cheap lock. It's just a spring-loaded ball holding the shackle in place. And um, there's, there's a tool for that. It's this. It's called the it's called the padlock shim. And what it does is um, it goes in between the shackle. You rotate it. Where's the other Okay. Uh, It's a secret, don't tell anyone. <laughs> so I'm actually pushing in this thing. This thing that's holding the shell in place. I'll demo it once more. Okay. So when you, uh, when you pick locks, you don't normally necessarily always uh, go with the, the big tools first. You first look, how is the lock constructed, what, what's the thing. Um, for instance, the organization of H2K2, uh, which I would like to thank for this great uh, event anyway, it's, it's really nice so far. Um, they, they came with this lock, uh, it's, it's a, a master pad lock. Every gym lock in the world has one of these. And school locker and everything else, basically. Okay, they said we want to secure some areas. Is this a good lock? Uh, well, I, I, I didn't know it. And that's why I also requested the people on the website to bring some US locks. So we can get some experience with these locks. And I looked at the lock and I said, well, I can give it a try. And I put in the padlock shim. <laughs> this to some people, their mouth really fell open and said, <laughs> and they said, did you know that every high school in America is using this lock? <laughs> and I said, I don't want to know this, but... Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I, I didn't even try if, if I could uh, ma uh, manipulate the lock, because it probably might be possible as well. It is. <laughs> Okay, but I, I didn't even bother to go deeper into the uh, knowledge. But th this, this is a really bad example because, or it, it's actually a good example of bad design. If, if so many of these locks are sold, it's uh, probably only like one cent more expensive to make it mechanically so that you cannot push um, this, this part inside with, with spring-loaded uh, spring uh, stuff. It, it's very easy to make it mechanically perfect. Um, but, yeah, the fact that they don't do it is just because they save one cent, they make a million locks. Uh, they think, well, go for it. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's the part on, on bypassing uh, locks. Um, I also
also brought some other tools uh, like this. This is actually what a lot of locksmiths uh, use to open locks. They, they don't bother to learn how to pick locks because there is much easier ways to open locks than uh, by picking. As I told in the intro, picking is a very time extensive uh, thing. You have to practice a lot, you've got to have some feeling. Um, it, it, it really takes a lot of time. It's, it's great, it's a nice hobby. Uh, I even pick it when I'm watching a movie or... <laughs> Uh, I also did pick locks when I was traveling on airplanes, but since September 11, I decided to leave my picks alone because <laughs> some of them are sharp and you never know what people might think. But that, that really is a shame. Um, the big gun. Now, how does a big gun work? I talked about that two years ago a little bit. I didn't have any big guns with me by that time, so I thought, well, I bring some now. What the big gun does is it works with the um, uh, what, what do you call it? Vibration. No, not, not, it's Vibration. A, it's Vibration spring tension. What it does is it actually pops the pins so that the top and bottom separate. Once the top and bottom separate, you turn real quick and you catch the shield line. Sure. No, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm going to explain. That's where we're getting. That's yeah. where we're getting. Okay. Normally. Um, uh, a lock has two pins, and we'll think of these two uh, locks as pins. And when they're at the right height, the lock will turn. Now think of this as two uh, pool balls. Here's the third one. When I hit with this one straight onto the middle ball now, what will happen? Only the top one will go, and the, this one will stay in place. No matter how, almost no matter how hard you can hit it, only the top one will move. And that's exactly what this pig gun will do. It will, the needle of the pig gun will stick into the lock, it will reach all the lower pins, and it will hit the top pins all in a row up. So at one moment that there's just this uh, split second of, of gap. And in this split second of gap, you have to turn it. That's the moment that you have to apply tension to the lock to, uh, to turn it. Um, Mike here brought me a lock. I have not tried to open it with this big gun yet. So it's stress. Stress. Sometimes when you try it, oh, let's see how this gets. Sometimes no matter how hard you try it, you can't get it. Uh, as a locksmith, I was locksmith for three years in the field. Um, most jobs I went on, I tried picking for five minutes. If I couldn't get in five minutes, I'd either drill the lock, pop the door, or use another method depending on uh, what kind of lock it was. Uh, considering the fact of cars, I almost never would pick a car lock. Um, some locks you can pick, some you can't. Well, none you can't. Some are really hard, as most people here would say. The demonstration, okay. No matter, no matter okay, how it's in like it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay, now imagine that there is locksmiths that do this all day and they normally only take one or two shots and they just pop open the lock. It's real easy, it's real addictive. When you are uh, no, but, but when you are into picking locks, uh, I can sometimes spend like 15 minutes in opening a lock, and I know that if I have the gun, uh, two or three pops, and it can be open. Um, so this this technique works with trying to hit uh, a shear line and then quickly turning it. There's also another tool. It's this one. It's not a vibrator. <laughs> now, this uh, pick has been modified by the owner. Uh, I'm not the owner of the tool. Uh, there's this guy in the Netherlands called Paul Krau. He runs a company in Lock Tools. It's also called Lock Tools. And he was, uh, yeah, he, he borrowed me the tool. And he modified it a little bit so it became even uh, a better tool, but it became a little bit more noisy. 
which for him doesn't matter because he is uh, official uh, door opener. When people lose their keys, he'll open it for them. And this is one of his uh, favorite tools. Um, what it does is it just um, hits the hammer, or where it hits the spike, uh, many times, thereby creating a lot of shear lines. And uh, what you do with this is you just stick it in the lock, you uh, hit it a few times, you put tension on, on, on random intervals, and most of the time the lock will open real quick. Uh, we're going to try it. That's hard doing handheld, by the way. You usually have a lock mounted on something. This is too big. Now, a lot of the real pros also use this tool. I've uh, seen SWAT teams use it to uh, to open doors. Um, this is this is real professional gear, but it's it's also available on on, on the net. I mean, people can just buy that. And I'm, I'm not sure whether or not that's a good thing because you really don't need a lot of experience to, to operate one. But yeah, people can make better locks, more high secure locks, and I think they should do that as well. But uh, yeah, as long as the industry makes these locks, uh, people can, can easily uh, get into them. Does it work on a padlock? It could work on a padlock. There's no reason for it not to work on any standard type cylinder. Most padlocks are standard type, you'll see the difference. <laughs> But as far as most questions, just hold the Thanks. Okay, I hear that there's only 20 minutes left. Yeah, let's, let's really raise them. <laughs> okay. Um, let's get. Yeah, okay, let's see. Um, high security, you want to stand that stuff a little while? Um, let's, let's go into high security. Um, maybe you demonstrate your uh, multi lock uh, lock. Okay, or? you want to show us, you want to do your thing with your multi lock cylinder while you do this? Or no? uh, yeah, I'll. I'll okay. This is the multi-lock, pick-proof lock, which he's going to pick now. Um, <laughs> this cylinder is kind of larger than normal. There's two of these in the world. Multi-lock has one, I have the other. Hold it up, says the guy. Okay, let's hold this up. I can't speak while I hold it up, so only for a second. system where you have an exterior pin and if you just had exterior pins it would be just like a normal lock but if you took a drill drill straight through the inside of an exterior pin you have an inside pin so you have to get both of them to match oh plus the keyway is a horizontal keyway instead of a vertical keyway so when you take out your key everybody gets the key stuck in the door because they're sitting there with it straight up and down and it goes sideways so if you ever have that problem turn it sideways look like a hero this is a fully functional lock this is a fully functional key it's an awfully big, fully functional key too. And uh, that's pretty much the way it works. It's a, it's a very simple concept, a very well designed concept. He's going to pick it now that it's so well designed. And uh, yeah, I don't know if you can see in the picture how the pin move. If you look carefully, uh, the. I can't see. I'm just going to hold this in my hand. Does this work? Yeah. Sound going to hate me for one of those mics. Okay, I cannot see the wall. Got the uh, red pins here, which are going to be the top pins. Uh, can you see? I can't see what I'm doing. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the red pins here, which are the top pins. Okay, that's the outer top. You got it? Keep it ready. You got the outer top pins. You have got the inner top pins. Then I'm good with one. Then you would have the bottom pins down here, which since there's a key in there, aren't going to move. Now when you push it all in, everything lines up and it turns. That's a it's supposed to turn. Uh, and if you put the key all, all the way, it works better. 
Okay, the lock's broken. Okay. Lock's <laughs> broken. <laughs> so that's basically multi-lock and a quick overview. Uh, for more detail, it's publicly available on the internet. Let's uh, go on to some other locks real quick. But he just picked that one real quick. I can't do that. I wish I could. <laughs> well, picking the multi-lock is not as easy as it looks like. Uh, it takes a lot of training. And even I run into some multi-locks that are uh, virtually impossible to pick. Sometimes it takes me more than half an hour, 45 minutes to pick one of these locks. On the other hand, sometimes it only takes like 10 seconds. Um, yeah, the, the, there is some variety and, and one time it works, one time it doesn't work. Uh, I brought this lock because I knew I could open it. Uh, yeah, maybe if somebody has a multi-lock with him, I can try to pick it, but it probably won't go as fast as this one. Although it is very nice to demonstrate that it's, yeah, it's really a big, heavy uh, lock and many people are really impressed. Okay. Now this is protected, so you cannot use padlock shims. So I have to re-pick it again. Well, I'm just going to show you a couple different size locks. A standard mortise cylinder, which would be normal size cylinder, is this big. Then you go up one size to a Corbin Rossman jumbo cylinder. These have been used about 20 years, but they're still floating around. Like that. Then you go up one size. This is a lock most people here will hopefully never see. If any of you see it, I'm going to really kind of laugh at you guys. Uh, this is a detention cylinder used only in prisons. Uh, <laughs> Normally you wouldn't have this, but it just so happened my company reps up, so I was able to get my hands on two. Here's one of those. If you look inside of there, there are ball bearings for the pin to roll. There's all kinds of amazingly good things. That means I can't pick it. I don't know if he can, but he's tried. I don't think he got it. It's a really, real hard lock to pick. It's basically just a really big cylinder, though. Lots of metal, hard to break. Okay, um, time is running out, so I will quickly demonstrate some more uh, lock pick tools. Um, for instance, uh, last time I was here, I got a lot of questions about this type of lock. Uh, you, you, you call it the ACE lock? Yeah. Is that ACE, ACE lock. lock. Right. Um, th there's a tool available for a long, long, long time, and it's this tool. Um, and it really works on, on the most beautiful way um, uh, a tool could ever work, because you don't have to do anything. You just stick in the tool in the lock. You wiggle it a little bit. You wiggle it, and, you wiggle it, and there it goes. <coughs> now the lock is open. Unfortunately, I don't have the shackle with it, but you probably normally that would mean you pull out the shackle. Now. That's a uh, bicycle lock for the, those U bolts. Everybody see it? That's what that is. Kryptonite brand owner coming in like that. Yeah. And, uh, that's a basic tubular ace lock and lock pick. Now. That's some of what's on the machine. Yes. Uh, those have different pin configurations. Some are five, some are seven. There's okay. some more. A standard. Um, how this technique works? Because that's, of course, the really interesting part. It's nice that you can open it with just wiggling it. But what's the technique behind it? Um, you can see the. You can see all, all the pins. I'm trying. I'm trying to focus. <laughs> In a perfect world, you can see all the pins. Okay, well, just trust me when I say that um, you, you, you can see all the pins in this lock. You can actually see them all. And what's happening is that when, once you stick this tool in, um, all the pins are being pushed back all the way at the back. This is how you reset the tool. Once you do that, once you insert the tool... You're out of frame. Okay, I, I now reset the tool, so all the um, all the feelers are in the in the deepest position. Okay. Okay, they're they're all in the highest position. Now, when I insert it into the lock, the pins are actually going to push the the feelers back, and when they are at the right position, they're not binding anymore and they're not pushing the tool back anymore. And that's how it works. Here, I got it again. Um, and the, the lock just impressions, uh, it gives a, a perfect impression of what the key looks like. I could even bring this to a key shop and uh, get a copy of this uh, key. 
which really is, um, yeah, it, it was a good design for many years. I think it was like 15 years that nobody could actually pick this lock. And then somebody found out and uh, made, this, uh, made this tool. But impressioning, as, as this is called, is really a very valuable uh, technique in, in lock picking. There's also something else that I don't think has been demonstrated quite a lot. Mm, people ask me about dimple keys. Uh, that's these type. I here have a cutaway dome lock, D-O-M, and uh, it has five dimples, which means just holes. And here's a little ball, and the little ball is an extra protection. When you insert the key into the lock, the little ball will be pushed up, so it reaches a higher point than the blank normally can get. And that's uh, also a, a copy protection, because in this way nobody can uh, yeah, make, make a blank for this key. It's very difficult to pick this lock. It's extremely difficult. They put in all sorts of um, anti-pick pins. It's, it really is a very nasty lock to pick. On the other hand, I just explained to you a little bit about uh, pressioning. And there is a very easy trick to open these locks. And I'll try to demonstrate it. Um, on the, here, you see the original key. It has a deep cut, not so deep cut, deeper cut, not so deep cut. And here's the blank that we prepared. The blank has the cuts all, all the way to the deepest. So this key will never open a lock. We even made it a little bit deeper. It, um, all the holes are just a little bit deeper than they normally would get. And what I'm going to try to do now is put some um, uh, aluminum tape over this blank key so it becomes high again. Stick it in the lock. Then the pins will push on, uh, on the prepared key, um, they will bind, I will move it left and right, and the keys that bind will actually push deeper and deeper and deeper into the foil, and at one moment, hopefully, the lock will turn, and I have an exact copy of the key. And this is a technique that is um, that's possible on almost all dimple lock keys. It's not possible on the multi-locks, because they have pin in pin and some have to be pushed upwards, and therefore it doesn't work on that. But it works on an amazingly amount of, um, of locks. Let's see, I had a small scissor somewhere. Small scissor. I was looking for the scissor real quick. There it is. Uh, there's a lot of other high security locks out there. It, uh, if we had a lot more time, we'd be able to go over that. So I'm just going to quickly show them uh, right after he finishes it. If you can find the scissor. Okay, until he finds the scissor, I'll show one at a time, real quick. You got it? Okay. Real quick. Uh, let's go with Medico first. Medico is just about the most popular lock in New York City when you can go to high security. Medico locks, if you can see that poster, that's how they work. If you can't see the poster, you're not going to find out. Uh, the way they work is they have normal pins, up and down cuts. But, if you look very closely at the key, you're going to see the key cuts are not straight, they're the angles. Uh, the key vertical, couldn't get there. You see those angles? Okay. If you look at those angles, what they're doing on the inside is the pins spin uh, up to a third, I think, up to about a third. And in the side of the pin, there's a slot, so that once you spin it, it has to be in line with that slot. What happens on the side is there are a bunch of fingers. Those fingers have to go into the slots for it to turn. So you both have to do up and down, and those angles. There's left, right, and center angles. And there's a stand of six cuts. And when you start trying to pick that, you're going to have a heck of a trouble. I personally don't know when you can pick it. I've heard there's one guy out in the middle of nowhere that can. Uh, this is, I consider, a pretty darn good lock. Uh, the cam locks are good. All the, all the cam locks are a little bit different. Yeah. Basically, that goes a very, very good, hard to pick lock. Uh, let me go with another one while he's making the key. Uh, here I show you what I do. I put some of this uh, aluminum foil that is being used in the car industry and the heating industry um, over this blank. So as you can now see it's covered. The trick is that the way where the key will enter the lock, it has to be perfect. Because that's, yeah, that's where it will probably uh, jam up if this goes wrong. Okay, I'll try to insert it. 
We pick locks, we don't make films. Okay. Now, the, the prepared blank is in, in the lock. And now I will wiggle it. This will take a little bit longer than the ace lock. But hopefully the result will be the same. But anyway, if... Yeah. On average, that would open the lock. Uh, of course, the tinfoil would slowly shape into the right levels. You go in there, you can wiggle, 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 pop. That's how the average wouldn't take very long. Okay, there we go. You got it? Yeah. Challenging text saying nobody can pick our locks, no locksmith, no test institute, no burglars are ever known to pick our locks. And this is actually uh, the type of key. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Don't you love it when someone says it's impossible? Isn't that just yeah. so great when you prove them wrong? Yeah. What a rush. Okay, in focus, hope everybody can see. Um, in Germany, from my German lockpick friends, I bought this tool, which is now a little gone. Nobody leave. And it's, um, yeah, it's, it's this tool. And it's called the, the Fall tool, because Mr. Fall uh, made it. And it's a um, decoder pick. It picks the lock, but it also reads the lock, so you can make the key. Uh, here, you can, oh, here you can see um, what pin you are uh, picking, and here you can see the depth of the, of the key, and yeah, with this tool you can open the, the lock that they claimed on their website could not be picked. It was a real challenge for us to, uh, to pick it. Um, what they do with this lock is they have discs in the lock, so there's no pins but discs. I'll just show you a few of these discs. I hope I'm in focus. Okay. Okay, well here you can see the, the discs that are inside. And here's the real notch, and they put some fake notches in as well. Uh, so when you start manipulating the lock, um, you'll experience like it's in the right position, but it's actually not. And it took us quite a while to figure out how to actually pick this lock because of the false notches. Uh, and then Paul, uh, Paul Krauel from Montes, he found out that there's a technique that if you uh, put the pick in the lock. Yep. Okay. Wow, that's a big thumb. Thumb stop. <laughs> Okay, now I'm at the first disc, and I'm trying to feel the cuts. Here's one cut. Okay, I'll put it here. Then I'll go to the disc two. How many discs are uh, usually in there? Uh, like eight. Now, it's possible to get a false cut. Now, what Paul found out about these false cuts is that they are actually just a little bit tighter. So what you do is you go to one disc, you feel, hey, okay, it's getting, and you feel it's getting again, and you just go for the widest, um, you, you, you just go from one point of the cut to the other, and the widest is the right cut. 
And that actually was the trick. You have to feel the, the cuts. Is that the tensioner, that black thing? The tensioner that I'm holding here with my pinkies. Do you know this now? I know nothing about that top. I've seen it in my catalog, I've sold a couple, I've never had time to play with it. Okay. Wish I did. Well, now the shackle, is that to prevent a shim or just to make it look more high tech? It keeps uh, both colors off it. You can't get to the side of it. You can still go to the tip, but uh, it's usually pretty hard the way it's locked on and locks it. Well, they, they probably call it the insurance lock. I don't know why that is. And uh, the people at Abbas were pretty upset that uh, people were publicly uh, picking their lock because they had on their website this nice text. <coughs> now I need to focus. Do they still have that on their web page? Sure. Go ahead. Okay, well, it picks that we're going to get some people online for the microphone for uh, some questions real quick. So everyone jump and run and push each other. I mean, don't. Uh, wait, one second, wait, wait. Okay, sorry. Uh, sorry if I'm wrong about this, but I also don't think you mentioned that the fresh owner of possession of professional lockpick tools in certain states are illegal. I mean, you'll go to okay. license. Lockpicking tools are not illegal. Burglary tools are illegal. When I'm driving down the street with a hacksaw in my car and a whole bunch of money, I'm illegal. I personally always have had lockpicks in my wallet. Um, lockpicking tools. I'm not licensed. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm certified, personally. But, um, <laughs> certified. Oh, certified by uh, Associated Locksmiths of America and the Master Locksmiths of North Jersey. I'm from Jersey, sorry. But, uh, what exit? What exit? <laughs> With the picks and some good expensive stuff on your front seat, you're probably in trouble. If you get pulled over for no good reason and you haven't had picks with you and they ask what they are and you say it's one of my hobbies, uh, depending on who the cop is, you can probably. It's, it's a burglary tool, so is a hammer. That's how it falls under most laws as far as I've seen it. Other than that, um, good luck. You can get picked up for almost any tool. Okay. You can, you, as far as burglary tools, any burglary tool they can pick you up for in New York. It doesn't matter what it is, a hammer is a burglary tool, so are picks. Picks are probably going to be more of a burglary tool than anything else you can find. Except for maybe a, a bunch of slim dudes in your car. Okay, it's all here. In, in many states, Now, Abus made an improvement on the lock, so that this tool actually uh, only works at a, a certain range of their locks. But the people from the German sport group, they made a tool that beats that. <laughs> At this moment, there is negotiation with Abus what to do. Uh, but when Abus, uh, yeah, they just had to take the text down, and now you read, our locks are really secure and very hard to pick, and they don't say uh, it's impossible to pick anymore. But... Sorry, my question yes, quick. Yeah, with the with the master combination lock demonstration, are there any uh, commercially available combination locks that you can recommend that aren't vulnerable to that trick? The shim. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know any. I know there are some out there. I don't know any off the top of my head. Only we just the the Sergeant and Greenleaf padlocks. S and T. Yeah, that, that, that are used in the military to keep cabinets closed. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The S and G makes good locks. Well, it used to be that locksmiths could look at these mechanical locks and try to figure out what's wrong. But now, with electronic locks, you need software engineers to take them apart, and there can be backdoors in the microcode factory combinations and bypass codes. Which no locksmith would ever know about. So you call the computer guy who's a locksmith too. Right. Not too many of us. <laughs> Yet. What do you think about that? Real quick, I'm going to show up on my security lock that is really interesting for a lot of people here. Uh, if anyone here happens to have a real good engineer who does micro tooling, I can pick a pick for this, but so far I can. Uh, instead of using pins, it's called Miwa, it's from Japan. Instead of using pins um, that are normal, it uses magnetic pins. All right. So all those little things inside are my camera. All those little pieces inside, if you can see them, there's like that, you can see now. All those little pieces are actually magnets polarizing one way or the other. So instead of pushing and pulling the pins physically, it magnetically does it. Now, I haven't picked it yet, because I don't have someone who can me a really little magnet, but it really does. <laughs> magnet on a stick, you know? That should do it. That's me one. Uh, let me get this other one. This one's called Fouché. This isn't really made anymore. It might still be made, I haven't seen it around anymore. Uh, that's a pretty fancy looking cable. You guys can see that. Uh, it, it, it's, it's big.
big, it's heavy, it's butch. I mean, it's a nice size lock. Look at the keyway, if I'm in the camera right there. It's, it's, it's a pretty butch lock. Yeah, very much all over France. In the U.S., I've seen a few places. I just happened to find one in the back of the truck. This one is called the Concept. Um, literally, it was in the front of my shop. I saw this, and I went, hey, cool. I've never seen that before. It's nothing more than three pin tumblers, or three uh, sets of tumblers uh, in one lock. He looks very much like a big pointy sharp thing. It's just a bunch of cuts. Uh, so basically three. I've never seen this anywhere else, but it looked cool to me, so I got one over. I've seen the Chinese logo. Uh, the last thing to show is Asa locks. Uh, this is a very good lock. I've never picked it. I think he said he had it. Have you ever picked this one? Uh, the Asa twin? No. no. Yeah, this one's it's possible. But... It, it, it's possible, but the tr trick with this is the standard cuts. If you can see at this angle, there's the standard cuts on top, and on the side there's another set of cuts. Those cuts, rather than being pinned normally, they're, they're pinned with little fingers on the side that ride up and down. So you have to pick the first set and the second set at once. I ain't that good yet. <laughs> Is that what they look like? Yeah, they don't bounce well with pick on either. Uh, that's Asa. And real quick, because I know we're going to be running out of time. How are we on time? Okay, 30 minutes, thank you. Um, <laughs> safe lock, look, it's shiny, it's square. That's it. Uh, a padlock. <laughs> that's a padlock. It's got hardened stuff and metal. Uh, this one is actually a cheap clone of the American 701, which is a common padlock in every storefront. Uh, they're real good padlocks, this is a real cheap padlock. If it doesn't say American on it, I personally don't trust it, and that's not my product myself. Yes, sir. Uh, this one uh, can, can be, the Americans can be, when I said. Yes, sir, question. Well, uh, where would you go to get this tool, the lock tools in there, good place to The internet. Everything is on the internet. Or my internet for lockpick, which I found out when I was 11. Sovietsky.com. I was 11, I bought my lockpick that I have my wallet to this day. On lock, when I hit the lockpick. Yes, sir. I brought a lock for you. It's a lock that the uh, Novus Army uses. They use a lock up M110, M16s, not night vision goggles. Bring it up here, we'll pick it for you. <laughs> American padlock. Uh, these pins, the top pins, have staggers in them. Uh, it's actually pretty hard, so I'll let him do it because I suck. That's the question. Question about the Miwa, the magnetic one? Yes, sir. Those pins, um, is there a range where they have to fall or is it an all or nothing? It's positive or negative. So they either up or down. So basically, if you wired that with a little electromagnet to engineer them, somebody could write an algorithm just to flip all the permutations pretty fast. Uh, only limitation has the physical, physical, oh, yeah. Physical, yeah. spring pushing at it. Yeah. And you just risk the springs. I think personally, if you took a stick with a little magnetic head that read a positive and negative, and you read each of them, and there's only eight on each side, it'd take about 30 seconds, and you just take the key and stick it in, and woo, or just invert the, uh, invert it. Uh, you can make a rake for those, but it's really hard to get attention. Yes, sir, question. Um, I got a question about the, I don't know if, I've, if there are any other locks in the US that have this sort of a layout, but the key stuff for the new Volkswagen, where it's got a groove cut on the side. Those are uh, called laser cuts. Mm -hmm. Can I, can I, can I take a question? Go for it. You're talking about uh, this lock. <laughs> <laughs> I never know you, I never met you. Um, and uh, yeah, they, they look pretty sophisticated. I hope I can zoom in. Okay, and actually, um, some people found out how to pick them, and they made this, they designed this pick. <laughs> guy's name is uh, Randy Mize, he's a little uh, southern guy with no teeth. <laughs> Something okay. cursed him and said it's impossible, so he said, that's for you! You're the best guy, though. No problem, Randy. Uh, he's building it, it's okay, he's off camera. Once he's done building it, then he'll be on camera. No, he's off camera. Parts falling off the 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 camera. Parts falling off So it has better raking motion, but oh, yeah? he, he just took out a few things to make it more silent. 
but to make it more effective with the power transfer from the engine to the... Summary, you overclocked it. <laughs> to get a little extra buffers to keep the noise down and add in extra power and pop, 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 pop. Can you recommend any particular website or anything where you can find a good set? Yeah, um, there's this guy in the Netherlands, it's Paul Krauer. Uh, Locktools.nl Locktools.nl and on security.nl you can find a lot of information about specific locks. If you say, well, what? Uh, military lock. Okay, I, I can give it a try. And also, the, the German people uh, from the German sport group, they have a real nice website. It's uh, lockpicking.org. So these are the three websites uh, that you could probably get this. Any other questions? The line's gone. Okay, some guy way in the back. You have to stay. I think we're running out. Just about out of time, so scream real loud. FedEx. I FedEx them. I... <laughs> Better be safe than sorry. So we're just about done, uh, wrapping up. Okay, one guy in the back, scream loud. General question, do you prefer a key lock or a combination lock? I prefer key locks. But if you don't want to carry your key with you, get a combination lock. If you don't want to carry a combination with you, get a keypad. Don't, oh, don't, don't key get the cheap one that I just picked with. Uh, <laughs> yes, it does make a high security series. Uh, that's not it. Yes, sir, in the middle of the back. Yeah, he mentioned the uh, the uh, Sergeant Greenleaf makes a very nice uh, combination lock. Uh, it's very heavy duty. It's used by the military. I think it's the X12 or X2 or something like that. Uh, okay. front, we're running out of time. Yeah, without the shift, how can you put the combination lock? What was that? Without the shift, how can you take a combination lock? Go on, like the Amicus Coopers find out. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's in there. It's just you basically can feel out the uh, master pad lock. Otherwise, we're talking about real safe locks. Uh, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> It's real hard. I got one here, I can show you how it'll take me about an hour to explain it. Yes, in the back. How's your best locks? Uh, best is just a brand name, like any other lock. Uh, best makes a nice core. That's a nice lock. And we're wrapping it up because he's doing this thing. What's this? What's this mean? Come on, Running out of time. Running out of time. Kill it because you're throwing no, failing. I, I think the tape is uh, left. Okay, I didn't much. pick the lock. Too bad. Next time. <laughs> See you guys in two years. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.